G'day there. Thought I'd do an update on my mini Tesla coil after yesterday's disasters. As you can see, I've got it running quite well here. I have some plasma. I have some fluoros lit up. They get brighter if I touch them. Or even just get near them. Not touching, but just near. This one's a bit pedantic, but it goes alright. It's the toughest to light up out of the three. I've got some single wire stuff going down here. Most of these are pretty location sensitive. There's a few that I couldn't get to work. This one here seems to be the pick of the lot. It seems to be the best tuned. I can actually pick it up and move it around a bit. These other ones stop working as soon as I move them. They're pretty position sensitive. And they won't work outside the loop. Uh, I'm going to check that one outside. That one does though. Not very far away. Alright, I've still got the plasma going the whole time there. It's a nice little oh, three, maybe four millimeter free forming plasma arc there. And the other thing that I thought was really cool that I wanted to show you in this update was if you follow this wire here, which is just a multimeter probe, and the earth pin of my power point there, my power board, follow it across over the clip lead to another clip lead to yet another clip lead. To a pancake coil, which is acting as a wireless repeater. This is not connected to my Tesla coil in any way, or the Slayer, or whatever you want to call it. A huge range, it's a magnetic repeater. But it's a pretty powerful one. And then this wire continues up here as an antenna, and it does need an antenna, to my pressure cooker. Which I was playing around with as a top load. It's a useless top load, but it does make a really nice receiver. Now these guys, they get brighter if I just get near them, so I am acting as some kind of antenna here. And I think you might be seeing some EMFs on my camera, which is indicating it is repeating off the aluminium. Um, if I touch that aluminium, that light down there goes out, so that's part of it. And if I touch those, they go bright. As you can see, it's not connected, it's just sitting on there. This one is connected, but I'm um, using it as uh, using the pressure cooker as an antenna. That's where I would normally put the antenna on that setup. I can just hold it there. It won't work over here too well. Oh, it does a bit. Okay, so that's some pretty good range off this little tower. It's running on a 20 volt laptop charger at the moment. I haven't checked amp draw yet. I'm expecting it to be under one amp, but I could be really out there. And yeah, if I touch that, it goes really well. My little light down here goes out when I touch it too, though. And this one doesn't work on its own sitting there, but if I put it over this one, it does work. And just by getting closer without touching them, they all light up. Touch them and they light up really well. Uh, then they should go really well. On Earth, you can get a really long way away. I don't think that pancake's transmitting much that's going to affect this one here. But that range is purely just an extension on the wide of the earth. Uh, at the moment I'm good two and a half metres away from that little tiny Tesla coil over there. And that's lighting up pretty well. It's a little um, new rounded style um, straw hat type LED. So it's just got a little tiny spot that you see. It does actually emit quite a bit of light. If I, um, I probably can't get it to light up all this black stuff, but um, yeah, it's not a terrible amount of light anyway. They're about 16,000 MCD at full brightness. We're probably looking at maybe 5,000 MCD there, which is nearly candle bright. And just sitting there like that, that goes off. If I hold the antenna, that magnetic inductor does work. If I let go of that one, it sort of works. It depends on antenna location. It seems to like it best just straight up vertical like this. Or you might tuck, put it on the aluminium pressure cooker. Seems to be the best result. Now I'm pretty sure I could plug this earth into any other earth in my house. And um, it's not a very big place. You've seen a lot of this before probably. There's most of the lab over there. Lots of stuff I'm pulling apart and projects on the go all over the place, don't do much sitting on the couch as you can see. 
Uh, yeah. And I have solved some of my um, intermittent coil issues just now. I had this running quite well earlier today and I was planning on doing a video. And my heat sink's getting pretty hot. It's a small heat sink for 20 volts. And my state of tunes could probably be better. But um, with that primary coil location and stuff. And it was going just like this. I thought the transistor's way too hot. I'll turn that off and let it cool before I try and film. Because I've been playing with it for about 20 minutes. And I turned it back on. And I couldn't get the brightness out of these fluoros and I couldn't get any plasma. I was playing around with it for a while and playing with it for a while and couldn't get anything and couldn't get anything. And the transistor started getting really hot and it started going good. So I think I'm actually depending on some thermal runaway here to boost up the amp draw. So there will be some amp tests soon. Um, I just wanted to show the um, single wire repeater stations and stuff like that here in the aluminium pressure cooker. I really need to get a top load that works. I've tried a couple of things. I'm not having much luck. Every time I put anything on there, it just does that. Doesn't matter what I put on there, any load, and it just kills the whole thing. Alright, so that's about it for now. Thanks for watching.